And now, ladies and gentlemen, please fasten your seatbelts. Welcome to PreneurCast. Yeah, business cards being swapped, beers being drunk. Can I say a nasty word? Can I say procrastination? With Pete Williams and Dom Gosher. How well did that go down? We can talk about that entire thing in a very another rant and soapbox episode if you want to. Visit us online at preneurmarketing.com. Welcome, everybody, and welcome to this week's PreneurCast with him, Pete Williams, and me, Dom Goucher. Hello, hello, everyone. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, an awesome week and a uh, good start to 2014. Indeed. Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to this very interesting uh, episode. We're going to talk this week about some of the lessons that Pete learned from his recent batch of consulting calls that he's been doing with members of the Preneur community. Uh, and we'll get to that in a minute. But before we do that, Pete, what's been going on this week? Uh, another crazy week. Had a couple of half Ironman races in the last two weeks, which was a bit challenging. And uh, kind of putting my SEO hat back on a little bit, to be honest. In the, the telco business, in Infinity and Simply, we kind of took our eye off the ball a little bit when it comes to SEO. And uh, just need to kind of get back onto it, you know, working through the seven levers regularly. And we're now back at, you know, a bit of a f- traffic focus uh, and focusing on the SEO world. So kind of, yeah, back looking at backlinking and on-page optimization and all that sort of fun stuff that comes with, uh, you know, the world of SEO, the ever-changing world of mm-hmm. SEO. Yeah, it's a very small group of people that actually call that fun, Pete. <laughs> But you're absolutely right. You know, going going around the seven levers, looking at uh, back to looking at traffic and search engine traffic is is definitely a, a source for you. I'm sure there are other sources um, that your traffic comes from. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. So it's just one mm. of the traffic sources. Um, coincidentally, that's also what I've been doing this week was consulting with a client on their website. In in my case, you know, you say you've got the on page stuff settled down. Uh, I don't know, you, you went through a big series of uh, split tests and all that technical stuff to get that sorted out. But it was the uh, the basic structure, architecture of the site and the, the on-page, as you call it, that I was consulting about this week as well. So there's a bit of a coincidence. Well, there you go, mate. I've done uh, similar stuff. Pick your brain and see what other stuff you uh, have. Because the, the challenge for us, which is, you know, exciting, is that, we sell phone systems. You know, it's not the most exciting or sexiest thing in the world. So, you know, it's not uh, an amazing, you know, topic for content marketing or for social sharing, you know, the, the buzzwords that are SEO these days. So it's a bit a bit more of a, a challenge for us to sort of, you know, generate those quality backlinks and things like that with um, substance and, and, and quality, I guess, is, you know, the word I've used a few times there, but that's what it comes down to. So it's been cool. It's been interesting. And, uh, you know, maybe when we come up with some really cool ideas, we'll, uh, we'll share them on the blog or in, in the podcast. Yeah, that would be uh, be cool. Although I'm, I think we might have to explain some of those acronyms that we've been throwing about. <laughs> cool. So, um, uh, if you've been out training, I'm sure you've been out listening to another book, as, as always. Absolutely. What's uh, uh, what's this week's choice then? I've, I've kind of gone a bit old school, so it's not actually a, a new book by any stretch of the imagination. It's quite a few years old. It's uh, "Fooled by Randomness." which is uh, written by Nassim Taleb. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. He's written a number of books in this sort of vein and sort of topic. It's all about, you know, randomness. Is stuff really predictable or is the world more random than we expect? And can you predict randomness? It's sort of very, I was going to say esoteric, but I'm not quite sure if that's the correct word to use. But it's really, really interesting. He's got a financial background and kind of used this sort of philosophy to sort of trade um, the markets and sort of his, his basic philosophy is that, you know, things are less predictable than we really believe and, you know, we always try and use hindsight to justify that it was or could have been predicted but, in fact, it was just a random occurrence and that happens um, very often in the world. And it's just an interesting take. A lot of very smart people that I respect um, quote him quite a bit and refer to his work so I thought it's about time I kind of uh, delved in and kind of got a bit of understanding of that. So there's yeah, Fool by Randomness, his book after that was The Black Swan, and then there was another book a couple of years ago, which I can't remember the title, which I'll, I'll get to eventually. Yeah, the Black Swan, I think, is is the more famous or more widely read of yeah. his books. Yeah, I decided to start from the start and go with sort of, you know, the Fool by Randomness, I believe, was, was the first book in that sort of trilogy, for want of a better term. So I thought I'd start with that and try and, you know, grow the understanding and the thought process in line with how he kind of developed it from from a publishing perspective. Cool. So there you go, exercising your brain as well as your body. That's it. 
I'm impressed by that. Folks, um, as always, we, we mention audio books because we find it a great way to consume uh, this kind of stuff, uh, especially if you're out and about like Pete and I are. Um, Audible is the place we get our audio books from. Uh, and uh, there'll be a link to in the show notes to the book that we just mentioned. Um, but also, if you are a Preneur Cast listener, you can get a free trial with Audible, which means you can download any book for free if you haven't already got an account. And you can sign up for that at audibletrial.com forward slash preneurcast. Again, link in the show notes, folks. Don't sweat about it if you are currently out jogging and listening to us or walking a dog or whatever you do. Um, but do check that out, audibletrial.com forward slash preneurcast. Um, check out and get your free, well, whatever you want to listen to, really. Absolutely. Any of the books we recommend is, is available, and they've got a huge selection. It's great. Yep. And, uh, oh, by the way, folks, we have just started putting the direct links to the audio book in the show notes as well as the physical book. Uh, just to help you uh, find that and get on with it if there, it's if it's available. So there you go. So there we are, Pete. Um, back to the this week's topic, which is a little bit of a a review, but more of a focus, I think, on uh, some of the things that you picked up, some of the commonalities that you picked up on when you did your recent uh, series of consulting calls. Hmm. Well, yeah, it's it's been interesting. January was a a lot of fun. We 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 did these for a couple of reasons, and I guess. To provide a little bit of context and not spend too much time on it, uh, inside our Platinum Group for our advisory board members in late November, early December, this topic came up and you know we spent a bit of time chatting about it in one of the, the sessions and a lot of people got a lot of value and aha moments from the clarity and the direction that, that took place. So what I decided to do was actually uh, open up my calendar a little bit in January and offer 15 one-hour consulting sessions to people in the preneur community, so outside the advisory board or platinum group, and uh, end up being about 18 or 19 because I kept saying yes to people who begged me to, to do a session, which was all fine. And there was probably three or four really clear commonalities, I guess, between a lot of these people as they were trying to get direction for 2014. So the whole premise of the uh, the sessions was to come on and spend an hour with me really dissecting their business, their business model, working out what those seven levers were in their business, and most importantly, what the low-hanging fruit was for each one of those levers so they can actually have a really clear action plan at least for the next 14 weeks. Like it's been two weeks on each lever, and at the end of those 14 weeks, once they put in the work, have effectively doubled the profit of their business because it was about what are the low-hanging fruit in their business that can increase each lever by that 10% goal and obviously double the business. And for so many people, getting that clarity um, and that clear direction path of action was a huge win for them so much. And now, obviously, going through that process and repeating it throughout the year and continuing to to, to double and work on the, the profit of their business, which was really cool. So that was kind of the purpose of the sessions is to give that clarity and that direction and that focus for a lot of people. But um, now, I think I think the important point before we go on any further is, is you said there, you know, this idea that about the seven levers and about going, stepping through picking a lever with traffic, opt-in, conversion, etc., and spending a period of time focusing on it. And I think where, as you said, where all this came from was from the Platinum Group where we were talking to people. And if you are focusing a period of time on something, if you don't have clarity on what it is you're focusing on, then you struggle to actually achieve your goal, whatever it might be. Yep. Yeah. So absolutely. it's absolutely vital to to have that clarity of what each of those seven levers is going to be about before you start. So I think just just to add that in, just to remind people, you know, it, it, we we say go through the seven levers, focus once a week or focus two weeks, whatever. But it, it's even more important to have a higher level focus, right? Absolutely, you need that framework and that filter we talk about so often. It it is the 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 foundation of everything we do in our businesses and projects, and everything we really help the consulting and advisory clients focus on when they want to grow their business and do so very successfully. The one thing before we get into all of that, I want to talk about something that really stood out um, for a lot of these calls. Not every single one, but for quite a few, particularly for the people um, in the internet marketing community and in the sort of very small early, early stage startup 
type scenario who might be doing an app or wanting to do something along those sort of lines or even becoming a consultant is that I found that for a lot of these people, the, the motivation was very similar, which I found interesting, and that a lot of people were going into this uh, quote-unquote entrepreneurial venture uh, as a means to actually supplement their existing income and you know, fundamentally, for want of a better, better term, pay off the credit card in that they wanted some extra income, they, they had some debts they needed to pay off, they just needed the income. So they're kind of delving into this world of entrepreneurialism um, to do that. And, you know, we sort of touched on that a little bit in the conversations. I didn't want to spend a lot of time doing it. But it really tied back into a series of, of essays that I wrote recently, and, and there's some more to come and possibly a book, um, about these foundations of wealth. Because I found a lot of people that they didn't have the really good wealth foundations or building blocks or, you know, personal finance habits, for want of a better term. And, you know, for a lot of people, it really was, okay, hang on, let's put this business stuff aside for a moment and work out what are you trying to do? What's the real immediate goal you've got? And for a lot of people, I need five grand in the next couple of months. And, you know, the quickest way to get five grand or two grand or $1,500 for a lot of people is not writing an ebook, setting up an account with Amazon and CreateSpace, publishing the Kindle version, trying to get traffic, starting a blog, building a community, guest posting, driving traffic to that ebook, making sales, paying Amazon 30% and then taking the commission at the end of the day. Like that's a lot of work to make a couple of grand. And, you know, you got to learn a lot along the way and, and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, some of the advice I gave some people which really resonated, which I'm really excited about was how about we actually do an apprenticeship. Let's learn some marketing skills. Let's learn some business skills in a much more sensible way that gets you to that goal a lot quicker. For example, and there's a big essay on the blog about this, that you know one of the best things you can be doing right now is learning how to copyright whilst selling all the crap that's in your garage that you've wasted money and built that credit card debt up spending uh, and sell those old skis, that jet ski, those old books, bits and pieces on Gumtree or eBay or Craigslist. And you get to learn and hone your copywriting skills, which you'll use in your entrepreneurial venture as you grow that side of your life, but it's going to get you an immediate cash return in a much quicker, much more sensible way than trying to start a business to make that money. So for a lot of people, that gave them a lot of clarity and a lot of freedom to go, do you know what? There's too much overwhelm with this business stuff. I'm just going to do that and I'll achieve my immediate goal of paying off that credit card or helping with the school fees or whatever they need that income immediately for and that was really cool to see and that's sort of what I'm working towards a little bit um, later this year which you'll hear more about. So that was kind of really cool to sort of feel that pain point um, in the in the community and kind of help address that. So that was really cool. I, I just want to say that, that you, did, you did cause me to look around when you when you went on your little diatribe about the ebook thing because so I, I expected a lightning bolt to come from the lords of internet marketing <laughs> and strike us both down. Um, but you're absolutely right, you know, and I think that that is one of those things about taking the responsibility to come. These people came to you, you know, they they put their business models in front of you, and, and you know your experience, your knowledge, you, your perspective, uh, really, really helped them. You know, I've seen some of the feedback from some of these people, and 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 sometimes you need somebody to come in and say something like, yeah, okay maybe eventually you might make some money or even possibly a business out of that, but that's not what's going to solve your problem in the short term. Mm. Selling, selling stuff you don't need <laughs> probably will. Yeah. Um, it, you know, so, so that's a, it's, it's a good little, as you say, it's a good little side thing. And I do recommend people have a look at that, that article. I'll link to it in the show notes. Yeah, awesome. Um, but, but just before we do actually get struck by lightning, I'm, I'm going to move you along on that one. <laughs> cool. So the, there was fundamentally three business um, commonalities that I, I also saw from these sessions, which uh, I got a lot of value out of and know the community did too. First thing was that a lot of people didn't have clarity on their offer. So, you know, the very first question I, you know, want to ask people is, okay, what is your core offer? What is it you do? What is the core thing that you are trying to uh, build a business upon? And some of the waffle and the confusion and the answers people gave was very uh, enlightening for everyone. Um, that if someone can't, you know, give an elevator pitch, and it's a, a term that I hate, this, uh, have your elevator pitch, but if you can't really clearly articulate what it is that you do, um, you're going to have problems sitting down at your desk and actually doing something because a lot of people either A, couldn't get really clear on what it is they want to do, B, 
couldn't really articulate what the core part of all their offerings was or, or C had too many contradicting offerings. So, for example, you know, one person, they, okay, I want to teach X, Y, Z. And let's use the example of I want to be a um, meditation consultant. I want to teach meditation. I really believe I can help people learn to meditate better. I want to, I want to build a business around this. So they had a local practice where they were doing meditation classes. They had uh, an online ebook about meditation. They had uh, I started a membership site about meditation. They also had a magcast to start like a digital magazine about meditation. And they're trying to do all these different things. I'm like, okay, what's the core thing you want to do? And they're like, well, I want to do it all. And that was, okay, well, hang on. You've got so many balls in the air here. You are like that person on the carnival or on the sort of variety TV show back in the day where they're spinning all these plates and they're running from plate to plate to plate to plate to make sure nothing actually falls down and smashes and not really doing anything well. And people had a lot of time getting clarity, you know, really sort of articulating, okay, what is the main thing you sell? What are the subsidiary things and all that sort of stuff? And I'll get to that a bit more in a moment. And the last thing was people had just had this, you know, shiny object syndrome and any sales that hit their desk, they'd purchase. So they had a, you know, a they're, they're going to be doing a, a webinar series um, to with guests to basically build this list because they, they thought the thing they needed was a list. So they had this webinar software and we're going to be driving all these JVs um, to come on and do these group webinars and basically you know scrape those people's communities' list so they build their own list. And I'm like, okay, that's great. What are you going to do with this list? And they're like, well, I'm going to sell my stuff. I'm like, okay, that's great. But are the people you're getting on going to have the right audience that you want? And are the, that, is that audience going to actually want to buy your stuff? Because the guests you're talking about are completely different to the community you're trying to build. So are you just building a list for the sake of building a list or you're building a list to progress your business? And for so many people, this is really interesting, is that you know they had this goal, I need to build a list, not build a business. And there was a lot of breakdown between those two things. That- Can I just in- interject there? Yeah, I mean, you, You've absolutely hit an, a, a nail so so square on the head. You know, from my own personal experience, the people I talk to, you know, if I talk to people about actual business, you know, I come at it from the other side, which is, you know, a lot of the work I do is for promoting things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of the digital media stuff that I do, the digital marketing consulting, is is like, okay, so what's so what are we promoting? And and one of the best things I ever saw was, and I've said this a hundred times, I'm sure, but you know, it's one of my all time recommended books, which is Michael Port's book, Yourself Solid. Yeah. And in there, he has a little a little paragraph, and it's worth it's worth the book just for this. It's a little fill in the blanks, which is, I do this for these people in mm. this way, and it, it forces you to be clear on your offer and who you're offering it to. And the number of people who can't actually answer that question but carry on forwards. And, and, and the example that you gave is, is spot on, which is, okay, so, so they don't know who they, they don't know what they're selling or who they're selling it to. But the next thing on their list is, I need a list. So they go and find a list. And, but as you say, if you ask them, well, wh- why are you going to that, jo- that joint venture partner? Why are you asking that person to join you on a webinar? Or why are you trying to buy that email list or whatever it might be? They'll say, well, because I need a list. But they're not even, the clarity just is already gone at that point. They're working towards something that they don't actually know why they're working towards it. Mm, yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah, absolutely. It resonate really resonating with me so far. Awesome, cool. So so that was sort of one of the big things that kind of stood out um, during these conversations. And then moving on from that, kind of the next roadblock that I, I saw. So some people went through, you know, we, we jumped that hurdle and they hit another roadblock. Some people sort of had the first hurdle. Um, you know, completely removed and out of their way, and the friction point they hit was this next roadblock, which was too many business units. They had too many plates in the air. And the way I describe this to a lot of people is that fundamentally every business from a very high-level perspective has three elements. It has a conversion engine, which is the thing you sell and the way you sell it. So it might be an ebook, It might be consulting services. It might be an app. It might be a software for service SaaS type delivery platform thing online. It could be whatever it is. And each one of those conversion engines, each one of those things that you sell that generates revenue for a business needs to have a few elements to it. It needs to have a marketing campaign. So you have the conversion engine, 
which is you know powered by the marketing that needs to be done. So blogging, guest posting, podcasting, whatever it might be. So you have the marketing campaign driving the conversion engine. And then obviously you have the delivery platform. So how do you actually deliver on that promise once the person's paid you? So do you do time for money consulting? Do you have a membership site? Do you have uh, an application that you need to code and make sure it doesn't break? Do you have you know, staff? Whatever it might be. So you have that delivery platform. So fundamentally you have marketing, conversion engine, delivery platform. And what I found talking to all of these people, people were, were having like, okay, so they had an ebook. So they had to have a marketing campaign for that ebook. So they were blogging, they were guest posting, they were, you know, trying to get, you know, guest slots on podcasts to talk about that ebook. And then obviously they had to work out and have the account on Amazon and create space and be able to deliver that ebook. Okay, that's great. But then at the same time, they tried to start a membership site. And that membership site needed a lot of delivery platform technology. They needed to work out how to use Kajabi or Market Pro Max or Optimize Press and do a membership site on that and have a, a payment gateway plugged in. And that's all fine. But they also had to then figure out how they were going to market that membership site. And on the side, they also wanted to do some consulting, some local business consulting maybe. So they needed to obviously you know, have time for money in their calendar type appointment, so, you know, where they charge time for money. They need to work out and write a sales letter to sell that consulting thing, and they need to do some marketing to drive that consulting. And then they also had an iPhone app for a really cool idea they had, which is an awesome idea. So they need to obviously have the conversion engine, which is, you know, obviously most likely the app sitting in the iTunes stores. So need an Apple account and understand how that platform works. And then, you know, the delivery platform was, you know, deal with outsourcers and coders to make sure that the app works. And anytime there's a bug fix needed, they can manage the outsource and get it done efficiently and effectively. And then they needed a budget and time to market the app. They need to go out and sort of get reviews of the app and drive traffic to the iTunes store and all that sort of stuff. And when you look at this, they consider it, or prior to our conversation, was considering they were running a business. But really, when you break it down and look at all these different things from the prospect or from the perspective, probably is a much better word, from marketing, converges engine, delivery platform, each one of those is a separate business unit. You end up having 20 balls in the air because no wonder you can't achieve anything when Monday morning you're trying to write blog posts for your ebook, Tuesday afternoon you're trying to get guest posting opportunities on other blogs to promote your magazine, Friday afternoons, you're doing interviews for people's podcasts to talk about your consulting gig. And then Wednesdays and Saturdays, you're trying to deal with outsources to code your application. Like when you really break it down and take a moment to write out each of these things, it's really enlightening. And I really encourage everyone to sort of, you know, stop, grab a pen and paper and, okay, do a whole bunch of circles down the middle of your page horizontally and write in each one of those circles. What is it that generates revenue for your business? What are the different things you have half done, trying to have done, are out there in a half-assed way, out there working really well, absolutely killing it, whatever it might be? Each one of those circles needs to be a different conversion engine that you have in your business. Ebooks, consulting, sales letters, apps, magazines, membership sites, blah, 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 blah. Um, and that's fine. So if you write each one of those out in a horizontal fashion um, down the middle of your page, and then you go up a level and draw you know, as many circles as you need or as you have to to facilitate what you're trying to do to market each one of those conversion engines. So for your app, you might have four little marketing circles. You're trying to do guest posts, get reviews, blah, blah, blah. And also underneath it, write what are the delivery platforms that each one of those conversion engines require you to maintain, manage, and deliver on. And you'll be surprised of how messy your piece of paper gets, how overwhelming it gets, and the clarity you get when you look at a piece of paper with 37 circles on there, and you can only see two circles that actually have done well. No wonder 2013 was a headache and had overwhelm and was full of distractions and unfortunately not progressing your business in the speed that you want. And that was kind of a big eye-opener and friction remover, for want of a bad analogy or bad term, that a lot of people got from these calls. They couldn't get to themselves by trying to do this themselves. They kept hitting that brick wall themselves and having that clarity of me working through this with them was really cool because we were able to get my iPad um, on, 
sharing it through Skype so people could actually see my iPad screen. And I had my Jot pen, which we spoke about in our award show the other week because it's a, a great stylus. And I was drawing these things with the people as I was quizzing them and questioning them and delving and supporting them on these calls. And, you know, you can hear their voice change, the tonality stuff change throughout the conversations. They start to realize what the hell they built themselves and how many spinning plates they had actually tried to actually maintain. Yeah, I mean, the, the one thought, the one thing that sprung into my mind right then was, um, you know, you said you said that they thought they were running a business when really, as far as I'm concerned, they were just running. Yeah, exactly. Yep. You know, you know um, the, there's no other way to describe it. You know, if you think back, the example you gave was the, was the guy, the showman spinning the plates. Mm. Yeah. I imagine it was quite difficult for him to make a living being the guy being paid to run around and spin <laughs> plates. But unless these people are in a, are in the same business, then they need to stand back and realize that's all that they're actually doing. Yeah? Yeah. They're trying to make money being impressive at, at spinning plates. Looking at these things from the outside, I'm sure, you know, I've, I meet people like this, and, and you, you go up to me and say, oh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm really busy. Mm. You know, we all know people like that, don't we? And then the answer, the, really, the answer is always, well, that's a good problem to have. Yeah, <laughs> um, but but yeah, the, the 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 thing you're describing, the, the thing you're trying to visualize, and it is a visual thing, but it is an excellent exercise. Is is really is is as we always say with the seven levers. Every every funnel, every part of your business has its own funnel. Sorry, every part of your business has its own funnel, um, and each one of these things, whether it's an ebook, a magazine, a membership site, the consulting calls, whatever they are, each one of them has their own funnel. And if you were to draw them out as vertical columns on a piece of paper, even if you only did one traffic activity, one opt-in activity or one opt-in action, one conversion, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that's still multiple times seven things that you've got to keep an eye on, right? Yep, exactly. You know, and 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 this actually, I mean, I'll put a link in the show notes, but this really speaks back. It's another angle of this is looking at it from from something we talked about a long time ago, which is serial versus parallel. Mm. You know, if you're trying to do each one of these things, you know, even if you're even if you've mm. let's, let heaven forfend, you've got five things on the go. And you spend one day on traffic, well, that's either one fifth of a day looking for traffic for five things or five days in a row looking for five different kinds of traffic. It's still a massive dilution of your time. Because mm. this, this is something that kind of we spoke about on a couple of the calls, and I, I really overemphasize this really bad plate spinning uh, analogy. Because if you think about back to your childhood where you might have seen, some of these videos, or go to YouTube and just YouTube and try and find some plate spinning. You know what they do? These guys have a system that they follow to make you know thirteen plates spin. They get the first plate spinning beautifully, then they get the second plate spinning, then they go back to that first plate and make sure it's still spinning beautifully. They don't go and say, and they, and they, they do that over and over again. They don't kind of go, okay, I've got two plates here. I'm going to try and get both plates spinning at the same time, and they don't do the next plate until. Every previous plate is humming along beautifully in a system. And they go, okay, now I know these are working. I'll, I'll, I'll start to bring a new plate. But so many people in the business, they're like, all right, I'm going to try and half ass a plate spin and move to the next one and wonder why it fell off the stick and, and broke. Like it's just, it, it isn't common sense. And most people, when they look at it, they go, okay, they can see that it doesn't make sense and it's not intelligent, but you still get caught up in that. You need someone to help you so that in forest from the tree sometimes, I guess. I would, I would say so. I mean, it, it reminds me, there was a, a TV show a while ago that, that used to be, it, it was all in, of an age, these kind of things. And you would get that kind of thing on this show called The Generation Game, mm-hmm. um, where the contestants on the game show would try and copy somebody who was a professional. And the favorite one was always the plate spinning, because there is a system to everything. And in that case, you know, the example you gave there was was the guy working through it systematically seri- in a serial manner. And what, what an amateur would do, would look at it, think it looked easy, and go and try and spin all six plays. Mm. And then there's one that just spinning on spinning one, then, you know, and then moving on to the next one, they could probably pull off maybe two or three yep. at one go. Um, but it takes years and years of practice to spin like three, four, five, and six. 
Um, and, you know, bringing us back full circle to the reality of it, which is that you still need to be running our business, then if all you're doing is literally running around trying to keep, you know, I don't know, trying to keep traffic coming in, you're not concentrating on the other six levers on each of those on each of those funnels. Yeah, exactly. And that's where we kind of got to in, in, in most of these calls, which is, you know, giving people that clarity and that direction of moving forward. So the next step was about looking at this from the seven levers perspective and going, okay, let's mold everything you've got into one or if it is a stretch, two models, two different business units. So, you know, things like we went, okay, if all your ebook, magcast, blah, 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 in the air that you've got, you know, up there, is in the same space, is in the same niche, is trying to kind of complement each other, why don't you put them in an order that actually makes sense? Because right now you might have an ebook on, on Kindle that's selling seven dollars a month. Really? Is that adding any value to the bottom line of your business? No. Pull it off Amazon and put it as your opt-in bribe, your opt-in gift in your seven levels funnel. Turn it away from being a revenue generator. Take it out of being that conversion engine tool that generates revenue for your business and move it into a place that can actually add value to the bottom line of your business by significantly increasing the opt-ins of your business's seven levers. So say, hey, you know, this book used to sell on Amazon for $15. I'm now giving it away for free if you opt in with your email address here. That is going to provide your business a lot more revenue, a lot more impact for your bottom line profit than selling it for $7 in total profit a month on Amazon. So we really got clarity on all this sort of stuff. Okay, we'll move this here, we'll move that there and really kind of gave people that direction, that clarity they needed to go, okay, this is my business. These are the seven levers. Let's work these two things in together. What is it all, what, what, out of all the things I'm do, doing that's driving traffic right now, how do I continue to improve that and drive it to an opt-in of value, which might be this ebook that we've moved from a revenue platform to an opt-in platform? And then, okay, what is the conversion thing we're doing here? Maybe for some people it is, okay, I really like doing these consulting calls. Well, do a lot more consulting calls and do them free or cheap or cost-effectively that can be your thing that drives conversions because your sales letter copywriting sucks. So just do you know, five, six, ten consulting sessions a week for half an hour and use those sessions to sell people into your higher programs, whatever that might be. Those sort of things gave people a lot of clarity to say, okay, here is your business. Here is everything in the air. Let's mold it. Let's shape it into a very clear, definable structure that is the seven levers framework because that becomes the framework for you to do your actions every week so you know next week i'm going to be working on conversions and i clearly know that my business is based on converting this thing this way and i'm going to work on improving that it also then gave people a lot of clarity as a filter and we've spoken about this before on the show and i want to sort of harp on this but really saying okay moving forward in your business next time a really cool tool or product or thing comes across your desk, you can look at it not in the context of the sales letter that is accompanying the product, but in the context of your seven levers. So, you know, one of the examples we spoke about in, in a couple of these calls was some people um, last year loved the idea of mag casting, you know, publishing magazines in digital, you know, Apple's newsstand and on Android and places like that. So they jumped on the opportunity, which we supported um, last year. And they were doing it as a revenue source because that's kind of what the sales letter was all about, you know, saying, hey, it's a great way to sort of you know, generate a community and make money, which is fine. But to do that, you need to obviously market the magazine, drive traffic to the iTunes store, convert those people, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, based on your business, there's a number of different ways you can actually use a magcast with a very clear seven levers filter. It could be a traffic source. You could get other people to contribute to a magazine and publish a magazine very, very cost-effectively, very, very quickly in the iTunes store and use the iTunes store as a traffic generator. And that's all it's for. It's not, you give away the magazine for free. It's not designed to make money. It's not meant to be a conversion engine for your business. It's just a traffic generator. And you can have inside the magazine opt-in forms because the beautiful thing with digital magazines is they're interactive. So you can have a opt-in form inside your magazine. So therefore, that is now a conversion engine for you. Maybe for other people, it's, well, hang on, why don't you sell a magazine at 50 bucks a month? Make it a really high-priced magazine. And for you and your business, that is your delivery platform. You use that 
to actually deliver the content. So it's not a marketing tool. It's not even a conversion tool. It's something you give people after the fact as a delivery tool. You maybe give them free coupons as a stick product. So you don't, you're not really aiming to sell any magazines at 50 bucks a month. It's just a perception thing that you can create very, very cost effectively that you can give coupons to your high-end clients and it's a stick strategy to keep them around because they feel like they're getting this $50 magazine for free every single month. Or it could be your core business. It could be the core revenue source for your business. That doesn't matter. But you can sort of hopefully really quickly see there, Dom, that there's a number of different ways you could use a magazine in a magcast if you understand it in the context of a seven levers filter. You know, ebooks are the same, consulting's the same. You know, depending on your business and your model and your seven levers structure, there's a bunch of different places and ways you can fit in that tool. And it's really important moving forward in 2014 and 2015 and whenever you're listening to this, to sit down and go, okay, this is my business. This is the seven levers of my business. This is the core things for each one of these levers and I'm going to use this as my structure, as my to-do list, as my filter for everything that comes across my desk in the next 10, 11, 12, 3, 6, whatever period of time, months. And that was one of the biggest uh, takeaways for I think everyone on these consulting calls is they got a lot of confidence and clarity that they know, okay, over the next 11 months of this year, this is what I'm working on. This is it. There's no distractions. If something comes across my desk. I don't have to be overwhelmed and distracted by it. I can just use this framework as a filter and say, if I was going to implement this in my business, where would it fit and how would I actually use it without getting distracted by the sales letter? And you know, the results already in sort of the four or five weeks of people having this sort of clarity has just been phenomenal, which has been so cool. Cool. I, I have to say, you, you mentioned you mentioned stuff we say a lot. I mean, you talked about filters, and there was something that you missed off of your list of things. Ooh. And it's one of my favorite phrases, which is, just oh. because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah. <laughs> and in the case of filtering and clarity, some of these people – will have things that they've been focusing on and put an energy into that just don't fit. They're not actually supporting the business. They might have seen it as a business opportunity, but every business opportunity that you see that isn't part of the core business, the, 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 the primary offer that you have, your, your, you know, your conversion engine or whatever, if it isn't part of that or supporting of it, then it's diluting your primary efforts mm. um, and you need you know you need to filter that out and be careful with that I, I think your your examples of how to bring those parallel things into a coherent stream a single funnel or maybe two I think is a great thing for people to think about and focus on if they find themselves in this this fragmented way and they've already invested in these platforms or this this publication or whatever um, I think it's a great way to bring it all back and, and have a positive focused direction for this year. You know, these people that have, as I said, rather than running their business, have just been running in 2013. 2014 is, is the year for them to, to focus, um, definitely. But, but you never underestimate the, the value of not doing something. <laughs> mm, absolutely. Yeah. So there you go. That's, that's, that's sort of the, the big three or four takeaways from these. 15, it's turned into 18 or 19, um, you know, clarity consulting strategy sessions, I guess, for one of a better term that we, we did at the start of uh, the year, which was really cool. Cool. So, so, all right, I am now going to officially put you on the spot, sir, because I absolutely know the question on everybody's lips, um, even though obviously we're recording this, it's not live and I can't hear anyone, but as they're, as they're doing what they're doing, I can hear them. Um, are you going to do this again, Pete? Are you going to offer up these slots to the, <laughs> to the community? We did actually speak about this earlier. Uh, yes, in a slightly different way, though. Um, fundamentally, you know, the offer was made to the Preneur community through the email list um, and only a small segment of the email list, um, people who are on the noise reduction newsletter kind of touched on those people first. So that kind of you know, obviously got a lot of response. So people who are on the you know listening to the podcast and things probably weren't aware of the opportunity. So you, you kind of convinced me to do five more of these sessions. So, you know, obviously I run real world business. I've got my telco, I've got the e-commerce sites, all that sort of stuff. So I don't have 
a lot of time on my calendar for these things, but I do really enjoy them. So I'm going to do five more of these. They are ridiculously cost-effective. I'll, I'll do the same price point that we did them for uh, earlier this year. So um, I won't sort of reveal it on the, on the show here, um, but the price point is literally half of what my normal contracting consulting rates are, so it's, it's crazy cheap. Uh, so if you're interested, I'm going to do five of them. I can sort of fit five hours into my diary over the next couple of weeks. So email support at preneurgroup.com, support at preneurgroup.com if you're interested in one of these strategy sessions and then Flo and the team can sort of shoot you through all the details of, you know, how they work. They're all on Skype and the investment, which I said is pretty cheap. Uh, and, you know, I think it's going to give a lot of clarity. And we also gave away, which I'll extend to the podcast community as well, um, the Seven Levers Home Study course, which we sold for 300 bucks, 400 bucks, I think, at one point. So that pretty much covers the same cost of the consulting call. So basically, you're getting the consulting call for free almost. So people can do the math there really quick. So that was sort of, yeah, 400 bucks or 300 bucks for the course. Uh, so you'll get a copy of that too. So that way, you get clarity and direction from speaking with me. Uh, and then obviously, you have that support of the program to go through after the fact if you want to sort of, you know, delve in a bit deeper about different levers and sort of, you know, work out other ways to increase the the lever by 10%. So um, that's there too. But we're going to limit it to five because I kind of overstretched last time and it affected some other stuff I was doing. So I want to make sure that I, you know, my own businesses that I've got equity in is uh, much more important to me, unfortunately. So uh, we'll do five of these calls though. So support at preneurgroup.com. If you are interested in getting sort of this podcast done uh, on a very personal and intimate level. Excellent. Um, and folks do take Pete up on that. Uh, there are, as he said, there are only so many hours in a day. And even though he manages to cram in more than most human beings, um, there's a limit. So, uh, I, and I can vouch and so can all the people vouch for the value that you can get from uh, spending that time with Pete. Yeah. And to look personally at your business. The timing's worked out well because I've uh, got a couple of weeks off training with the two half Ironmans out of the way. So that kind of means a little bit less training, which means a little bit more free time. So I'm just moving where it goes. Okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the yellow card because that's twice you've mentioned the, the Iron Man in one podcast. So <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> quickly quickly moving on before he talks about more in, in human feats. Um, folks, what we'd like to do is run competitions uh, on the show. Usually if an author's been on and they give us some copies of their books or whatever, um, we like to run a competition and let you get hold of a copy of that. Um, at the moment, what we're doing is really just focusing on our award show that we had a couple of weeks ago, our 2013 awards. And my book of the year was a, a relatively old book, uh, which was Spin Selling by Neil Rackham, which I recommend anybody involved in any kind of sales uh, reads. It's not what you think. Um, listen to the awards show to, to get a clear idea about what a book's really about. But you can win a copy of that book. Uh, slightly different way of doing that uh, because it's specific to that show. If you go back to preneurmarketing.com and find the post for that show, and I'll have a link in the show notes if you want to click on the link, um, leave us a comment about that show. Leave us a comment about your um, awards, the things that you found the most useful in 2013, or give us some feedback on what you think about the things that we chose. And we will pick someone uh, real soon now. Um, in fact, we'll pick, well, we've got three copies of the book, Pete? We do, absolutely. Three copies of that book to give we'll away. We'll pick, yep, three people uh, and send a copy wherever you are in the world of Spin Selling by Neil Rackham. Um, now, that said, uh, while you're over at Preneur Marketing, do have a look around um, and leave us a comment on any episode, this, that, or on any other episode. Uh, you can leave it below the post for the episodes, uh, below the show notes, and every show has its show notes on the blog, um, as well as an opportunity to download the show if you want to download it to your computer or listen to it live on there. Uh, links for you to subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud, and lots of other places. Um, if you want to leave us an audio feedback, there's a little audio feedback button on the side of the site. We love those. Um, and if you don't mind, we will happily feature you on the show. Uh, so do leave us some audio feedback as well. Uh, and you can always leave us feedback on all the different platforms that we're on, iTunes, SoundCloud, wherever you're listening to this show. Um, so with that said, Pete, uh, let's wrap it up. What have we got coming up next week? Uh, an awesome conversation with... Uh 
John Acuff, author of Start, which was uh, mentioned in our award show. It's a fantastic book and, uh, you know, really entertaining. And, you know, it was, to me, audio book of the year. He is a professional speaker, uh, very engaging, uh, and the way he read and articulated and voiced the audio book was really, really cool and such a great, engaging way to do it. So uh, I've got him on the show talking about a whole bunch of crazy stuff when it comes to you know publishing books and starting out businesses and overcoming friction and um, a whole array of just awesomeness, I guess you call it. So stick around for that with John next week. Excellent. Well, folks, thanks for listening, and we'll see you all next week. You've been enjoying another fine episode of PreneurCast with Pete Williams and Tom Gocher. Make sure to hang out with the boys online at www.preneurmarketing.com or drop them a line via PreneurCast at preneurgroup.com.